Hi, welcome back. Today I like to make a super bright swing arm LED light that can be controlled through a smartphone app using Wi-Fi as well as with an RF remote control. My old work light has stopped working after serving me well for over a decade. So I've been looking for a replacement. First, I want something that is brighter than my old work light. And I like a swing arm that allows me to adjust the light angle easily. Secondly, it must be mounted on the table to save space on my small workbench. I also prefer some kind of wireless control, so I don't have to keep reaching for the switch. Since I'll be using this as a work light, I think it'll be more convenient for me to use an analog switch instead of having to use my smartphone app all the time. So the dedicated RF remote control seems to be the best solution. Unfortunately, I couldn't find one that fit all my requirements. So I decided to build my own. So let's make it. So, we'll begin by modifying some parts of the swing arm to make it work better. I received this swing arm phone mount from my sister. She threw it away because it didn't work as expected due to its weak clamping. This swing arm has three sections, which is a bit too long for my need. I will replace the third section with the 3D print connector. To begin, I remove the third section by unscrewing the knob and removing the M4 screw. The 3D print connector needs an M4 heat insert nut with a 6mm diameter on the top. This is for a screw knob that will lock the LED panel in place. To insert the connector, first, Loosen two M4 screws on the third section metal clamp. This will allow us to insert the printed part more easily. To provide more grip, I also use an M8 lock washer, which outside diameter is about 15 millimeters. Insert the lock washer into the provided hole, and then insert the 3D printed connector part into the clamp. Once all is done, secure it with the original M4 screw and thumb nut. Finally, tighten back both the M4 screws. Next, for the table clamping part, it has a plastic connector for inserting the arm base and a thumb screw for tightening it in place. Mine is quite worn out and unable to hold the arm firmly. So I have to print a new one with a thicker wall and longer length. This new connector is a tight fit and may need some modification based on your printer. However, for the new swing arm, this step may not be necessary. The arm base is made from a metal sheet bent to a cylindrical shape and it is hollow in the center. To provide extra support when tightening the thumb nut, I use a 10mm dowel insert into the center of the base. You can also apply some glue to keep it in place. Now we have a firmly assembled swing arm, we can move on to the LED panel. For the LED panel, I will use this 100 watt AC LED light. It's included 96 LED chips. According to the specification it has a brightness of 9000 lumens. I choose this LED light because of its lightweight and slim design. However, I did notice that the aluminium frame can get hot while in use, which is a potential drawback to keep in mind. Another drawback I noticed with this budget LED, is the front cover of the LED which is made from clear acrylic to maximize the brightness. So it produces harsh light, that may not be comfortable to use as a work light. To fix this, I soften the light with a 2mm milky white acrylic sheet. 
To begin, I remove the stock metal bracket by using a number 4 hex key and a wrench to remove the M5 screws from both sides of the bracket. Then cut the acrylic sheet to 21 by 10.5 centimeters. I also applied an additional layer of frosted white film, which was left over from a previous project to make it more diffused. To attach the acrylic sheet to the front of the LED panel, I used transparent double-sided tape. I tested the tape for a few days, and found that good quality double-sided tape can resist the heat from the LED, and hold the acrylic sheet securely in place. Although I considered using machine screws, the front panel of the LED is too thin for screws to be a viable option. Next, we will attach a 3D print bracket to the LED panel. I will use 30mm M5 screw. In order to make it easier to lock with the screw knob, I use a metal file to flatten the screw thread to create a notch about 1cm from its end. This will help secure the screw in place while tightening the knob. Attach the bracket to the LED panel, and secure it with the modified M4 screws. Please note that for the final version, I have added a slot for a M5 nut to prevent the screw from rotating. To control the LED light, I'm using this AC Wi-Fi plus RF smart switch. There are three different versions of this switch that come in the same package. So make sure to double check before making a purchase to ensure you get the model that you want. I got it from my local supplier. It came with this two button remote control. The RF mode uses 433 megahertz. So you can also pair it with any remote that uses the same frequency, which I'll show you how to do later in this video. The switch is designed to connect to the wire in a hidden area, so the connector terminal is not fully covered. Since it uses AC power, I am not so comfortable to be using it in an exposed area with the original shell. So, I designed a new shell that will mount directly to the bracket. The new shell will also raise above the back plat be about 3mm, to prevent the 3D print parts from making direct contact with the back plate of the LED, which can get hot during use. To install the 3D print shell, first, insert M3 heat insert nuts, to all provided holes on the bottom part of the 3D print shell. It requires 4 of them. Then attach a strip of 3mm of PVA foam to the bottom. Use 10 mm flat head M3 screw to attach it to the bracket. Next, I will remove the PCB from the original shell. Use a plastic opening tool to open the bottom cover. The cover should come off easily. After removing the PCB, I placed it in the installed 3D print shell. The output connector terminal should face the AC input wire on the back of the LED. Then cut the AC wire to an appropriate length. Stripped off the insulation. and tin the wires with some solder. Connected the wires to the output terminal on the PCB. For the input, I salvaged a two-pole AC plug wire from a broken power strip. The wire is 2 by 1 square millimeter, with an outside diameter of about 7 millimeters. 
Insert the wires into the input screw terminals and tighten the connector screws. Ensure that all wires are properly connected and secure. Insert the printed button razor into the push button. Then close the top cover and secure it with 15mm M3 screws. For the handle, I used a 6-inch metal drawer handle. However, you can choose any handle style that you prefer. I recommended choosing a handle that is thinner than the LED panel, which is about 1.5 centimeters thick. Now we can mount it to the arm. Insert the M5 screw into the arm connector and secure it with the printed M4 screw knob. Then route the wire through the arm and lock it with the cable clips. The cable clip is designed for the wire I use, which is about 7mm in diameter. If you use a different wire diameter, I have also included a step file that you can use to adjust the clip size accordingly. Or let me know in the comments, if you need a different size of wire clip. We need at least two clips for each section. Make sure to provide enough wire slack between each section so that the arm can move freely. In order to control the switch with your smartphone via Wi-Fi, You'll need the Smart Life app. To add the switch to the app, press and hold the switch button for at least 6 seconds. The green light will flash, indicating that the switch is in pairing mode. Make sure your phone is connected to a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network, and Bluetooth is turned on. In the Smart Life app, click plus button on the top right to enter Add Device page. The app should automatically search for nearby devices. Once the switch is found, click Add and enter your Wi-Fi network password. Wait until the app finishes adding the switch. Next, to control it with the RF remote. You have to pair it with a compatible remote control. This switch can be set to operate in three different modes, which are toggle, latching, and momentary. In toggle mode, you can turn the switch on and off with a single button. In latching mode, you can use one button to turn the switch on, and the other button to turn it off. Finally, there is a momentary mode, where the device turns on while the remote button is held down, and turns off when the button is released. But, I couldn't get the momentary mode to work properly with this switch, with all the remote controls I have. So I'm going to skip this one. To reset all the RF settings, press the button 8 times. The red indicator will flash. All the remote control data stored in the switch will be erased. To set the switch in toggle mode, press the button twice the red indicator light will stay on, indicating that the switch is in a code matching state. Within 8 seconds, long press the remote control button you like to use, and the indicator light will go off after the code is successfully coded. To set the switch in latching mode, press the button 3 times the red indicator light will stay on. Long press the remote control button you like to use as an on button. The indicator light will flash and stay on. Long press another remote control button that you like to set as an off switch.
The indicator light will go off after the code is successfully coded. Okay, that's it. I have included links to download all the 3D print parts, and some materials for this project in the description. If you have any question please let me know in the comment. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing to our channel for more DIY ideas and projects. See you next time. Thank you for watching.